All right, so now we're at Genesis 19, Sodom and Gomorrah destroyed. Spoiler alert with these chapter title. Sorry. Um, okay, verse 1. That evening the two angels came to the entrance of the city of Sodom, and Lot was sitting there as they arrived. So let's point out two things right off the bat. Um, two went ahead. You had in, in chapter 18 um, these three visitors that that when the Lord appeared to Abraham, uh, Abraham suddenly saw three visitors. Um, one of them gets revealed to be the Lord, I believe, and two of them, the two other men, went on towards Sodom at verse 22 and 18, um, but the Lord remained with Abraham for a while. So we see that the Lord is suddenly revealed to be one of those men, um, but now here I believe that this is saying um, those men were angels, by the way, the two that went on ahead to uh, to Sodom. So here we see the continuation of that story. Um, that evening, the two angels came to the entrance of the city of Sodom. So what that points out is, um, you know, God can appear sometimes through others. His angels appear sometime through others, as others. And I think that that's an interesting takeaway. Is it still possible? I would believe so. Yes. So let's continue. Um, Lot was sitting there as they arrived. So we see Lot, uh, Lot being the nephew of Abraham, um, Lot who has been uh, saved before. Um, so let's see how this plays out now because he is still here um, at the city of Sodom. He's there as they arrived. When he saw them, he stood up to meet them. Then he welcomed them and bowed low to the ground. So he welcomes these outsiders. What it does not tell us is like that he recognizes that they are angels or anything like that. Um, we don't even know if that's why Abraham technically humbled himself and ran and then used every mean to wait on and to serve uh, these, these three. Um, but let's just keep it in mind as a possibility here. Uh, he welcomed them. And then he bowed low to the ground. My lords, he said, come to my home to wash your feet and be my guests for the night. Notice that's kind of the same pattern that, that Abraham had greeted him with. So he's picked up a couple of habits from Abraham, possibly. Um, or it's just a cultural thing. Nah, I don't know. I doubt it's a cultural thing in Sodom, as we're probably about to see. Uh, but let's keep going. Come to my home to wash your feet. Again, that washing your feet. Be my guests for the night. You may then get up in the morning as early as you like and be on your way again. So they're both saying, hey, I know your journey. You're on a journey. You're on the move. Okay, but rest a while. Rest a while. Come take shelter here. Uh, let me serve you. Um, interesting pattern there to them. Oh, no, they said. We'll just spend the night out here in the city square. So these angels say, ah, we're going to stay, we're going to stay out here. Um, but Lot insisted at verse 3, so at last they went home with him. So he insists. So notice that's another thing. We just saw like Abraham very insistent and very, uh, <laughs> very persistent in, in his pestering of the Lord with, with these questions and being so bold and asking these things. Lot is insisting on this. No, 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 please, 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 please come in. Um, so at last... Uh, they went home with him. He set a great feast before them, complete with fresh bread made without yeast. Um, okay, so he's giving them a great feast. Uh, so that's a great offering in this hos hospitable nature, uh, this hospitality showing. Um, and you have bread, again, made without yeast. Um, wow. Okay, cool. So after the meal, as they were preparing to retire for the night... All the men of Sodom, young and old, came from all over the city and surrounded the house. Rut row. Verse 5. They shouted to Lot, Where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Bring them out so we can have sex with them. Wow, that's a very bold statement there. Um, in, in the King James Version, I was like, what is that in the King James? I mean, I guess I knew, but whatever. It says, where are the men that came in to thee this night? Bring them out unto us that we may know them. Whew. Man, that is a, they, they just, no questioning the motivation there. All right, so 
Where are the men who came to spend the night with you? Hey, we got some fresh meat here. Man, bring them out to us. Wicked, wicked city. I mean, jeez. All of the men. You know, strength in numbers there they're going for. At verse 6. Lot stepped outside to talk to them, shutting the door behind them. Hmm. So he intercedes. He, he puts himself between this large crowd um, and shuts the door behind him. As if, like, a single door is going to be much against all of these men. Um, you know, oh, wow. Um, please, my brothers, he begged, don't do such a wicked thing. So he's saying, don't do such a wicked thing. And then, oh, we get this really just painful, ah, this is so hard, uh, at eight. Look, I have two virgin daughters. Do with them as you wish but leave these men alone, for they are under my protection. Now, technically, his daughters are under his protection, too, so that seems like a very, like, whoa, whoa, wait, you kind of, that's a big thing. But what we see is this extreme measure uh, to protect these, these angels. Again, we don't know that he knows that they're angels, but, like, he's referring to them as my lords, uh, lowercase l, um, and he's respecting them, and he's trying to protect them, and that's the whole reason that he was so persistent in saying, come home with me, take shelter here, let us feed you well, just retire for the night, rest, and then be on your way. Get out of here as quickly as you can, because Lot knows that this is a wicked city. He even comes out to intercede. He's like, I'm begging you, don't do such a wicked thing. Please, 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 please. And then he tries to make the how here. He tries to make a way um, and, and appease this in some, in some way. Um, and, and it's a very just horrible way. I have two virgin daughters. You do with them whatever you want. And I'm sure the daughters are like, hello, what? <laughs> but anyway, that's what he did. And that's an extreme measure. He's like, you can take anything of mine. There's nothing so sacred in, in my home or in me or, or my family um, as, as these that I'm trying to protect right here. Um, if you want to read into it to a root level, I think you could get to that. Um, verse 9, stand back, they shouted. Who do you think you are? We let you settle among us, and now you are trying to tell us what to do? Mm. Okay. We'll treat you far worse than those other men. So I was like, oh, mm, you're going to get it too, buddy. And they lunged at Lot and began breaking down the door. Again, I don't know what <laughs> Lot tried to take matters in his own hand or protect them. Um... I think it's interesting to note the the layer here that these are angels and that Lot tried to intercede just as Abraham was trying to intercede on behalf of the innocent souls here. Um, you have Lot in this wicked city standing up to a crowd of men with, a, you know, a flimsy door. I mean, a crowd can get in, like, through pretty much any door that they want to get into, especially in that day, I would say, because this isn't like he lives in some, you know, fortified palace. Um, he's just living in this home in this wicked village. <laughs> so, like, what was he thinking? He's like, well, I'll offer them this. Uh, yeah, just to try to, to make this happen. But, you know, then they're like, what are you thinking? Like, you know, who are you? And they try to put him in his place, but they also, like, they say what they have done. You've got pride uh, in there. We let you settle among us, and now you're trying to tell us what to do. Like, that's speaking of pride and of control and of power. And they're saying, like, we're in the power. We're going to treat you far worse than those other men. And then they lunged at Lot, began breaking down the door. And, like, Lot was just trying to protect these two angels of the Lord, all right, who have come to basically judge this city. I love that God sees through these angels. Notice God said in, in the last chapter that I have heard these things. Uh, let me go down and see. Let us go down and see um, if they are true and, and how we need to deal with this. And uh, these angels, at verse 10, the two angels reached out and pulled Lot in and bolted the door. They bolted the door. Uh, they pulled him in. They saved Lot because they're like, dude, we're angels. Like, I ain't afraid of this. Okay? We appreciate that you were willing to sacrifice and pay such a high price. Your two virgin daughters, your innocent daughters, your family, uh, you wanted to protect us above them. Um, man, wow. Uh, yeah. So the two angels reached out, pulled Lot in, and bolted the door at verse 11. Then they blinded the men of Sodom so they couldn't find the doorway. They're like, look, 
problem solved. Okay, and that was it. Um, interesting, so they couldn't find the doorway. Verse 12, do you have any other relatives here in the city, the angels asked. Get them out of this place, sons-in-law, sons, daughters, or anyone else. For we will destroy the city completely. The stench of the place has reached the Lord, and he has sent us to destroy it. Okay, so they're saying, look, here's the judgment. Okay, do you have any family and friends? Like, you were just trying to protect us, and you were trying to do this, and that's a faithful thing to do. You are innocent in our eyes. Like, anybody that is among your household, right? Uh, that's basically what that's saying. Um, and boy... He says, we're going to destroy this. Okay, so verse 14. So Lot rushed out to tell his daughters, fiancés, uh, come get out of the city. The Lord is going to destroy it. But the young men thought he was only joking. So these fiancés who were about to be part of this household, uh, they only thought he was joking. They didn't take him seriously. Hmm. They heard, they did not see. Uh, 15. At dawn, the next morning, the angels came insistent. Hurry, they said to Lot. Take your wife and your two daughters who are here. Get out of here right now, or you will be caught in the destruction of the city. 16. When Lot still hesitated. So notice, he didn't rush. Like we saw Abraham, and he was rushing to do these things. With excellence still, not hastily, but hastily as far as like wanting to respond faithfully and right then, not hesitating. Um... And then the same way that he responded with like God saying, hey, circumcision, uh, that's the sign of the covenant. And then he's like, cool, everybody, come on, let's, let's go. Uh, we're doing this. Uh, you know, here Lot is hesitating. Um, I think that's important to note. 16, when Lot still hesitated, the angel seized his hand and the hands of his wife and two daughters and rushed them to safety outside the city for the Lord was merciful. So where they were being hesitant and where they couldn't, like the angels seized them and like delivered them to this safe place. They put him outside the city. Why? Because the Lord was merciful. So sometimes when we're dragging our feet and not being uh, responsive, I believe that the Lord will seize us and deliver us from those things um, in, in, in extreme cases. And this is definitely an extreme case. 17, run for your lives, the angels warned. Okay, they didn't just snap them over to some other part of the world. They put them there, and then they said, run to your, run for your lives. Okay, the angels warned. Do not stop anywhere in the valley, and don't look back. Escape to the mountains, or you will die. So they say don't look back. Um, very important. Uh, don't stop anywhere in the valley. Okay, uh, escape to the mountains, or you will die. Not going to read into the hills and valleys and mountains analogy right there because I think it's just that's reaching. Uh, but it is an interesting uh, bit of imagery for me. Don't stop in the valley. Um, keep going. Escape to the mountains or you will die. Uh, mountains, you get that perspective. Mountain uh, elevation, you know, we get it. Anyway, 18. Oh no, my lords, please, Lot begged. You have been so kind to me and saved my life, and you have granted me such mercy, but I cannot go to the mountains. And he's like, look, you've done a lot for me, but I can't go to the mountains. Disaster would catch up to me there, and I would soon die. Like, you're delivering me, but don't send me there. I would die. I would catch that. See, there's a small village nearby. Please let me go there instead. Don't you see how small it is? Then my life will be saved. It's like, look, we don't have to go to the mountains and start all over. Like, let us just go to this small village. We'll be safe there. Right? And he's questioning these things. He's not just going, okay, and then running. All right, the angel said. I will grant your request. I will not destroy that little village. So that was clearly on the table there. Uh, but hurry, for I can do nothing until you are there. From that time on, that village was known as Zoar. Zoar means little. Okay, so that little one. Um, and I think that that's interesting to note because you had that little, a little village would be like 20 people. A little village in that time, I imagine, would be less than 50 people. Uh, so that's, that's a really interesting thing because that's exactly what Abraham just kept saying. What did you spare it for? Um, but anyway, like you have these like call to actions that the angels are giving, even though it's not like the Lord speaking directly to Lot. Um, or acknowledging that um, the angels speaking on behalf of the Lord 
uh, tell him to go do these things. And he, he hesitates, then they have to seize him and then deliver him there. And then they're saying, run, don't look back, don't stop in the valley, like go to the mountains, you're gonna be safe. And he just keeps complaining. He's like, yeah, but I can't, like, uh, just let me go there and spare this. They say, okay, we're gonna do that. Um, interesting, so they have this patience there, we're gonna grant the request, okay? Oh gosh, 23, the sun was rising as Lot reached the village. Then the Lord rained down fire and burning sulfur from the heavens on Sodom and Gomorrah. So just epic James Cameron moment of every, I don't know, disaster movie from the 2000s uh, happening there. And oof, man, just rained down. Okay, he utterly destroyed them along with the other cities and villages of the plain, eliminating all life, people, plants, and animals alike. Okay, so there is a great cost. Um, even in the plants. Man, that's uh, interesting. Interesting, interesting. All life, eliminating all life in that area, in those plains, in that, those cities, and then all these neighboring things there. Oof. But Lot's wife looked back, which we know is a no-no. The angel said, don't look back. Uh, oh man, as she was following along behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Which is just suddenly a very strange supernatural thing. Not only have you got this, you know, raining down and destruction going on, this fire and this burning sulfur, but then you have her, like the wife, like looking back and then becoming a pillar of salt. Um, she looked back. She didn't look where they were going. She looked back. And that is just symbolic of a lot, uh, I am sure. But, man, she disobeyed and immediately she pays this really weird price of becoming a pillar of salt. This person became a pillar of salt. Um, and there's no footnote on salt, so I can't really cheat here and say, well, you know, um, all that I know about salt from just regular day-to-day -day life and not from sermons or Bible studies is salt's used for seasoning um, and salt was used uh, for preserving things. Um, but it's interesting that she became this pillar of salt. In other areas, what does it say? Yep, a pillar of salt. She became a pillar of salt. All of it say she became a pillar of salt, but you do have italics on looked back. His wife from behind him looked back, um, who is following along behind him. So Lot is looking forward, Lot is following the, the instructions, um, and he's leading by example, and he's leading the way for his family, and his wife does not follow that. She, she looks back. Um, interesting. And she becomes a pillar of salt. Craziness, um, yeah. How does that strike you? I don't know. Let's let's have a discussion about that if you would like to. Just weird. Uh, Twenty-seven. The next morning, Abraham was up early and hurried out to the place where he had stood in the Lord's presence. So Abraham gets up early the next morning. He's like, oh, smells like burning. Um, sorry, I didn't do that. Uh, he looked out across the plain to Sodom and Gomorrah, saw the columns of smoke and fumes as from a furnace rising from the cities there. 29, but God had listened to Abraham's request and kept Lot safe, removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities on the plain. Um, so God spared uh, this innocent man and uh, his... His family tried to spare his family, but the wife, who had freedom and who was called to respond a certain way, um, she did not respond with complete obedience, and she paid the price by becoming this pillar of salt. She looked back. She did not look ahead to where God was delivering them, to this new life that God was making for them, to this salvation that God has given. So that's really what I'm kind of looking at. I think we'll have to come back to the salt thing a little bit later. Um, because, I, yeah, just taking it as face value thing, that's all I can really offer right now. I don't know. Um, but I do think that, you know, it's very important to note, she, she disobeyed, she looked back. And it seems like a very simple thing, but, you know, it also showed what she's looking back for and the things that, that are important and what was on her side. Um, yeah, God had listened. 
to Abraham's request, kept Lot safe, removing him from the disaster that engulfed the cities on the plain. Then we get to the next section, which is Lot and his daughters. Verse 30, afterward, Lot left Zoar, which meant little, that little village, okay, because he was afraid of the people there. This village that was spared because he said, oh, I need to go there. But then where he thinks he's going to be safe, notice this is where he thought he would be safe and he, where he would not meet destruction. Now he's afraid of it. And he's like, oh, I see. Maybe the angels were right. And then he went to live in a cave in the mountains with his two daughters. So notice he winds up going eventually where um, the angels told him to go, where they said you would be safe, and that's at least stuck in his head, but we see that hesitation. So he made it where he was supposed to go, but he hesitated. And this village um, where he fears for his life, that little village, um, which I am going to interpret as a wicked remnant, not a faithful remnant. Um, I would say that that was spared um, because he did this, because he didn't listen completely in that and not complain and try to get it on his terms. And then he winds up going where he's supposed to anyway, but there was that hesitation, but now you've got this little village um, that probably should have been destroyed and all of that. And uh, man, we'll see how that comes back. Um, and yet, at verse 31, we see an odd, odd turn. One day, the older daughter said to her sister, There isn't a man anywhere in this entire area for us to marry, and our father will soon be too old to have children. <sighs> Don't like where this is going. But notice, they're taking note of the situation and what they know that they're supposed to do. You're supposed to be fruitful and multiply. This is the way. This is how we serve our purpose in life but there's no way we can do that is what she's saying she's thinking of the house and our father will soon be too old to have children 32 come let's get him drunk with wine and then we will sleep with him they will know him i'm sure in the james version that we may know in that one it is that we may know him it says that we may preserve the seed of our father well, okay. Um, that way, we will preserve our family line through our father. So we will preserve our friend. We're making a way. This is us taking matters into our own hands, which we have seen as a pattern is just foolish, foolish, foolish. Oh, when we try to figure out the hows and make a way. Um, when God has clearly made a way for them and, and provided everything else so far. But anyway... Um, 33, so that night they got him drunk. The older daughter went in and slept with her father. He was unaware of her lying down or getting up again. 34, the next morning the older daughter said to her younger sister, I slept with our father last night. Let's get him drunk with wine again tonight and you go in and sleep with him. That way our family line will be preserved. Again, they're thinking of future generations. It's a very extreme measure and it is just very disgusting, but... They're trying to preserve life, and I'm sure if you're thinking, well, God spared us for a reason. I mean, like, he, he gave us, like, there must be something special about us. We've got to continue. I mean, isn't that the way that Adam and Eve and all that have? I don't know what they're thinking, but, like, you get in extreme situations, and God made us adaptable, and he gave us this creative mind, and uh, I don't know. Sometimes it can really take us down some stupid paths, of justifying and we see the motivation here is to preserve this line um, but oof why wouldn't they just go over to Abraham's village like why they oh, well, we're stuck in the mountains and this is where we're gonna be and and dad's paranoid and freaking out now I don't know um, just a lot of questions there but a lot of layers to kind of dig into and and too many unknowns, so that's why I don't feel safe really diving into that too much more. Um, whew, okay, uh, that way our family would be preserved. 35, so that night they got him drunk again. The younger daughter went in and slept with him. As before, he was unaware of her lying down or getting up again. So both of Lot's daughters became pregnant by their father. Blah. Um, but, like, their plan is working. Um... They took matters into their own hand, the same way that, not in an extreme way, but it, it's still just as like, really? Um, with Abram and Hagar and Sarai at that point, before they were Abraham and Sarah. Um, 
taking matters into their own hands. Um, what's interesting here is that this is the second time, really, that it's been highlighted of a father figure and um, drinking. So this is interesting that, that they were able to get him drunk um, because you had this thing with Noah. Like, Noah, like, everything is, is saved. They're spared. They've made a way. And then, like, right after that, we get, like, a whoops. I got drunk and Nick had been here. Bah, and it led to this wickedness and, and further generations that were going to to suffer because of this and and how certain things are kind of decided in these moments. Um, so that's interesting um, and just something I'm going to take note of. Um, yeah, that bad things have happened when, when alcohol was present, uh, especially with alcohol and uh, family or, or children, specifically the offspring. And uh, yeah, they became pregnant by their father. Verse 37, when the older daughter gave birth to a son, she named him Moab. Um, Moab sounds like a Hebrew term that means from father. Yikes. He became the ancestor of the nation known as the Moabites. When the younger daughter gave birth to a son, she named him Ben-Ami. Uh, Ben-Ami means son of my people. He became the ancestor of the nation known as the Ammonites. So let's take note of those two tribes or those two peoples, the Moabites and the Ammonites, and what that came from. People trying to cover the how in their own way and taking matters into their own hands even after God had shown up in a very supernatural way and interceding uh, through this divine intervention of his angels <sighs> yeah so there we go that's the end of that chapter 19 and, and we'll see what happens next but it's been a little crazy now it's getting into some real juicy stuff here this, this chapter was like a, a Springer episode in certain regards. So anyway, I uh, hope you're enjoying it, and I can't wait to see what happens next.